How the heck are you, everybody? I'm Fastidious. Welcome to my channel. Today we're doing a guide on Sargok, the Gok, the orc with the mohawk, the guy with the Jesus on the cross abs. Here we go. He is the blood spear thrower, and he's tremendous. He is the second best source of single target piercing damage in the entire game for PvE content, second only to Silas. And for PvP, he's probably number one. He is the best. This guy is a monster. He got an enormous buff. I want to say exactly one month ago, uh, the main feature of the buff is this talent. Each attack launched has a 25% chance now to trigger Blood Spear. His whole kit is built around this Blood Spear ability. Previously, previously, it was only 10%. Only 10%, now it's up all the way to 25. This guy is a machine gun with that spear when you get him going. His attack speed is outrageous uh, from his own kit, from the way it scales, specialized attack speed abilities, just incredible. Uh, with this rinky-dink build over here, no ancients, you know, some random, <laughs> random infernal roar gear, you can see lots and lots of blue substats, only 83 crit rate, only 72 additional uh, crit damage. And if we go over here, just 14-7 attack, this build, this build, we're going to take him in, and we're going to beat 321. So guys, if you have Sargok, if you want Sargok, or if you're just curious what this monster really can do, stick around. It's going to be a great guide. Let's get into it. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, friends, it is Sargok O'Clock, so let's get into it. Here we are on fastidious.gg. My website is officially live, so definitely go check it out. I'll have the link in the description in the top pinned comment. It's a great way to check out heroes and go through them, so that's what we shall do now. I will also say we launched less than 48 hours ago, but since then we've continued converting images and trying to speed up the site, and it is freaking fast, baby. Here we are on the homepage with the new picture. Let's go to the hero list. Boom. Let's sort by marksman. Let's sort by legendary. Boom. Let's go to Sargok. Instantly loaded. Oh, you want to go to Salazar? Boom. Uh, I, maybe it doesn't look that cool, but if you know what it was like before, where we were waiting up to 10 seconds for these pages to load, we're down to 0.4 seconds for our maximum load time. Amazing. I think some of it was us. Some of it was Webflow. Maybe once we started getting traffic, they increased our, our loading times. I don't know. But we're cruising, baby. Here we go. Sargok. We're going to go through all his stuff, his basic attributes, his skills, awakenings. I'll go over my tier ratings. Then we're going to head back into the game, and we're going to check him out on Inca32's account. So big shout out to him. That was the account you saw previously. And with the build you saw previously, we are going to beat 321 for him for the first time. Anyway, Sargok. Here's some copywriting that I wrote. If you like the legendary marksman, I wrote all of those. If you like all the other stuff, which you probably would like more, Pink Jesus wrote all of those. Sargok is become speed, destroyer of sound barriers. This guy is lightning quick. A machine gun of a unit bringing the second strongest piercing damage in the game. Silas sends his regards. When you combine his DPS with a kit that synergizes brilliantly with both of his factions, and that is really true, Sargok is a menace to all. He also ignores a whole bunch of defense and serves as quite a reliable source of bleed. Excellent for Gear Aid 3, Void Rift, and Codex, and truly amazing in PvP content. So he's got the typical single target marksman attack range, and here are his ranks. If you don't know, on our website, on Facidious.gg, you are going to get ranks for the class, so how far they rank from zero to the maximum value of that specific attribute in their own class. So here would be marksman, and then overall, how they stack up to all the heroes in the game. So if we look at class, he's, he's pretty flimsy at 11.1. At uh, it's not so crazy for a single single target marksman, but this can be a slight concern because he does try to kill himself as a chaotic unit uh, with his ultimate. He's ticking off chunks of his health. Then attack. He's on the higher side. It's not crazy, but keep in mind this is a single target marksman to break that 4k uh, barrier. You know, that threshold, you really need to be an AOE marksman with the higher cost. It's pretty solid. Defense is normal. Magic resistance is pretty darn good. His is super high. Cost at 12 is completely standard for a single target marksman, legendary single target marksman. The standard one out of one block, revival time at the standard 60 seconds, attack interval coming in at 2.0 seconds. That is lovely. You know, that is the, the standard speed of a single target marksman, but it's super fast. Combine that with the specialized attack speed and the other things in his kit. He is, he's, he's a machine gun. What do you want me to say? And then a very, very typical 14 out of 14 rage regen auto. Let's go over here to overall so you can see how he stacks up. Uh, you know, compared to Ardia and the crazy fighters, not too high in attack, but very good for what he is. Health is low, like I said. Defense is solid. Magic resistance is pretty good. Uh, cost is 
absolutely typical. Block typical, revive typical, attack and drill typical, rage rage and auto typical. You get the picture here, guys. Let's move on now to his skills. So, Sargok's skills. You have to start with the talent. I touched on it earlier, but let's get into it now. Each attack, any attack he does, whether he's ulting or not, all his attacks count as basic attacks. I'll just tell you right now, Infernal Roar is an amazing choice for him. Each one of those attacks that he launches has a 25% chance to trigger Blood Spear, inflicting bleed on the target. So if he gets Blood Spear out, it's going to inflict bleed. However, if they're already inflicted with bleed, Blood Spear is going to ignore 50% of their defense. So attack is king in this game, right? Attack is our god. You want to have more attack than they have defense. If you cut that defense, in half, it's a lot easier to break the threshold, right? And you can exceed it by a lot more. This is what makes Silas so special, and on the same token, that is what's going to make Sargok so special. Before, with only a 10% chance, he had very unreliable bleed uptime. You may think, then why not just bring a bleed hero to help him out and keep uptime? That's possible for like guild boss or something, but when it comes to aerial units like the succubus boss in gear 8 3, or all aerial mobs you might want to take out in gear 8 3 or in the void rift, there's no one else that can put bleed out. He's the only hero in the game that can hit aerial targets, airborne targets, and inflict bleed upon them. So it's kind of clutch that he has a much higher chance to land that bleed now, which is essential because once he gets that bleed on, that's when he can start ignoring defense with his blood spear. Now onto his ultimate, Bloodshed Fury. When triggered, reduces 10% of current HP per second, reduces defense by 30%, and attack increases by 35%. Additionally, each basic attack lands two consecutive strikes. So, from the rest of his kit, he's going to get super fast as it is, but now he's putting out double hitters from his ultimate while that is active. He's going to reduce his defense so he becomes vulnerable. He's going to chop off HP. Obviously, he's a chaotic unit, so when you run him in a chaos team, that is really essential. It actually really helps. In other situations, it's kind of annoying. And a clear benefit, his attack is shooting up post-deployment by 35%. You can get this increase over here with skill ups to 45%. This lasts for 15 seconds. When skilled up, it's going to be 20. And it's a skill cost when skilled up of 900. It's an amazing, amazing ultimate. Moving now to his basic attack, pretty simple, 100% damage goes up to 120%, piercing damage to one enemy, prioritizing airborne units. Now his first passive, this is when it gets juicy, Bellicosity. Increases attack speed by 6 for every 1% HP loss. This can go up to a 10 attack speed increase if you get some skill ups landing. The effect of specialized attack speed is stronger when HP is lower. So he can build tremendous amounts of attack on him as he loses HP. Again, that's what kind of makes it a positive that he's losing HP from his ultimate. If you compare this guy with like Carnelian, it's the dream because he can go down to 1% HP, right? He's lost 99%. That's an additional 990 attack speed. Attack speed affects him differently because he's under specialized attack speed, so an incremental increase in attack speed is going to be more dramatic for the reduction in his attack interval than a normal hero without specialized attack speed, so he's going to get the benefits that someone like Falsia or Voroth are going to get. It's tremendous. You actually can get him to the max attack speed in the game of 1200. He can go, he's a, he's a machine gun, I'm going to keep saying it. It's outrageous. You need to run him right, but if you do, he hits so frequently that you really have crazy uptime, especially against bosses, on bleeds, and a crazy high number of occurrences where you trigger Blood Spear to keep ignoring defense. So this is like kind of a key to his kit. The lower you can get that HP, the better. Now we've got Feral Force, his second passive. When the target's HP is below 40%, increases the hero's damage by 10%. If the target is already inflicted with bleed, Blood Spear will inflict a mobilized state upon them for two seconds. This is basically a stun. It's another form of crowd control. A mobilized state can be triggered up to one time every five seconds. Now we can get that HP threshold up to a 50-50. 50% chance, and we can get that damage increase up to 20%. And you can really, really feel it. Uh, and even without full skill ups, you're going to see, I don't think we have it full skilled up uh, on, on Inca's account. You're going to see it when we do our 321 battle. Once we get the boss under that 40%, it's pretty remarkable uh, how quickly his damage escalates. And he, he is the star. He really helps take out the boss the same way you'd expect a Silas to. Finally, he's got a mastery skill as all chaotic and Arbiter units do for the arena. Arena damage increase, increases damage in the arena by 15%. This doesn't get skilled up, it's just a base level arena mastery. He's got a really, really good kit. Ever since they buffed this talent, it kind of changed him. He went from a pretty good hero to truly an incredible hero. Okay, for those of you that went crazy pulling on his banner this weekend, let's quickly go through Sargok's Awakenings. So at Awakened level one, during the effect of, ooh, little typo, during the effect of Bloodshed Fury, if the hero's HP is below, another typo, Jesus, is below 50%, 
additionally increases attack by 10% and lowers the defense reduction by 10%. So normally at max skill, he's getting a 45% attack boost. Now it's going to be 55. This is post deployment. That is huge. And the defense reduction goes from 30% reducing his defense to only 20%. A lot better. A2, very standard, plus 300 attack. Then the A3, this one is great. When Blood Spear is triggered, if the target's HP is higher than 80%, Blood Spear deals 80% extra damage. That is nasty. Keep in mind, if they are under bleed already, that Blood Spear will already be ignoring 50% defense. Now it is dealing 80% extra damage. Très Magnifique. A4, crit rate plus 8%, we love it, standard, and then A5, when any unit, including both allies and enemies in range dies, his attack will increase by 1%. Attack will be increased by an extra 1% if the unit is killed by this hero, it is capped at 20%. So over longer battles, as long as targets in range are dying, so like gear A3, he will max this out, you're gonna get a 20% increase in attack, a nice boost post-deployment, absolutely amazing i would say overall his a3 is probably what you want to shoot for the most obviously it's gonna be really hard to build awakenings on him because he is an ancient exclusive legendary hero and finally before we take this guy into battle let's head to the tier ratings so we'll go to this tab and you will see you can see all his individual tier ratings for every piece of content in the game uh, you can see this for every single hero on the website or you can just go to the master tier list over here and sort by whatever you'd like so a little slow there i don't know why some things i just don't understand like sometimes it's silky smooth other times it's like why did it take a second and a half i don't know anyway if we go to single target arena or more importantly anti-air arena we can find sargok pretty quickly he's a very decided s plus so let's just go back to his hero page and show it off over here i'm just going to highlight where he really shines so overall i gave him an s i think he absolutely deserves that he's an a plus for guild boss if a chaos team meta develops he easily is an s or even higher uh, Gear A2, I still gave him an A. He can kind of do the Silas Hex thing, Hex with his exclusive, but Silas, you know, even though it's single target, eliminating enemies so quickly, it's viable. Not as good as Silas, because he still has to land some Blood Spears. Gear A3, very decided S+. Plus. You might be thinking, how is he S+, plus if Silas is S+. Plus? Silas is quadruple S for this, right? He is literally the second best in the game for that role of nuking down the boss. To me, decided S+, plus. you're going to see it in this video. Voidrift S, if there was a Chaos meta S+, plus, for now just an s i don't think he's as good as hex or silas faction trial obviously s plus he's an amazing amazing piercer and if they ever add chaos faction trial he's a beast sticks i upgrade him to an s i think this even could be an s plus in the future with yovar i very much anticipate the meta being yovar calypso silas and sargok and then two other units probably constance and one other and i think decidedly already he's really good because he gets a ton of hits out he's doing double hitters on the ult crazy attack speed if you can control it that he's not getting healed and you get his uh, HP really, really low, which shouldn't be too hard, uh, you can absolutely have him machine gunning. There it goes again. Arbiter, very solid at an S. He's getting bleed. He's getting damage. It's good. And now Guild Wars and uh, Arena stuff, he's just one of the best in the game. Guild Wars, he if you had to go up against him, against some of those really top teams, it's disgusting. He's better than Silas. He's gross. And then anti-air, he's ridiculous. Some people even won't even run a Racha or a Piercer Lord. They choose to run like Vladov or Gon. Anyway, guys, let's head back to the game and let's go to gear raid three all righty guys here we are on inca's account and this is gonna be our squad and let me tell you we beat it but it's super sweaty i did this run yesterday so i pre-recorded it i'll narrate over you'll see we cleared it we got power of dominance off now uh, i will show you quickly the builds of everybody but what really needs to be highlighted we have good heroes but we have very bad gear Aracha's an amazing lord, she definitely helps out, but it's Sargok helping us delete the boss that makes the whole comp work, because Hotsit cannot kill the right side by herself, Idril certainly can't be soloing anything in the build that she's wearing, we need Sargok putting out crazy damage in the middle of the map to the mobs that are spawned, and then of course the succubus boss, and that is exactly what he does. So this is the build, it's super simple, I showed it at the beginning of the fight, the stats are not <laughs> crazy at all. The attack's solid, attack speed not that good at 231, we're not crit capped, very low crit damage for this kind of fight we're in a promo two spirit siphon skills we're missing some key ones this is really nice that we got the feral force up we can get the increased damage later on in the fight when we lower that hp threshold we didn't get anything landing on our attack speed which we really could have used and then we didn't get the max out on the ultimate but we did get level four the increased duration that's pretty huge that's gonna be sargok let's very quickly go through our other heroes hot sit over here she's got skill ups at least her ult is max we needed that especially since we're not running her with a nightmare lord totally broken set here she's not even crit capped which 
which you really want for this roll. Not even 150% uh, percent extra crit damage. The attack is solid, but not too cool. No set bonus here. No ancients. Lots of blue. We're just making do. For artifact, she is in a promo one blood bond signet. Now on to Nyx. Nyx just dusts it up. We did max out the ult, so that's great. Broken set over here, going for high attack speed. As much crit rate as you can get, we actually did max it. Not very much crit damage, and then some attack. Totally broken set here. Even had to go broken set on the left, because I needed some rage regen, and this starter piece provided it. For the artifact, we have a Reaper's Emblem, <laughs> zero promotion, plus three. Moving right along to Idril over here. Idril, max out Idril's gaze. That certainly helps. But the build, we're in a Doom set. These two pieces are from from the stuff you get from the Volca missions. And then this one's just an attack bonus piece I picked up. Uh, and then some solid Annihilating Might, but lots of blue substats here, guys, right? Nothing too crazy. The attack speed is low at only 257. Attack is solid, but crit damage is also very low at 217. Aracha helps, but we really need Sargok to make up for this, quite frankly, subpar Idril. I don't think Inko will mind me saying that at all. I think we're just thrilled we got it done at all. That's all our piercers. Dallin, her gear does not matter at all. I don't even know what she's wearing. This set doesn't matter. Just put a lucky coin on her, hope for the best. Make sure that the rebel passive is maxed out. Moving right along, we showed Hotsit. Um, let's show Aracha now. Aracha we get some damage out of. We go for really high attack speed because we want to really increase uh, the chance of landing Spider Toxin. Uh, that's really it, and then that explodes and we get poisons. Uh, it certainly helps. Over here we went Lunacy Visor, since she's going to tank, we want her healing herself up. Broken set over here, just going for HP with some DPS and then tons of attack speed. Here you go, we got attack speed on that breastplate, that's why we brought an Ancient. Really, really normal gear, right? He was only clearing gear 18s and then a couple uh, 19s here and there. Uh, so pretty, pretty solid, pretty normal build. Laurel really doesn't matter. Just give her some tankiness and put her in Invig. This is to buff uh, Idril. Um, that's the only person that's going to get Invig on this whole account. I just went for any random mythic artifact for flat, uh, flat stats, the HP contribution, namely. Get her HP over 20k and you should be all right that she can take at least one hit from the boss if it comes to that. For Dolores, broken set here, no Invig to speak of. We got attack up to 12.1. And she is in a Keen Wind's Wisdom, the, the classic Ma Bucket artifact, as I will always call it. Over here for Autumn, totally broken set here, just trying to give her any semblance of attack speed, any little bit of rage regen, and of course, as much HP as we could. 25k is really good for only a 5-star uh, Autumn. I was just going HP everywhere I could get it, and then flat HP. Flat HP helps uh, if you've got a rare hero that you need to build stats on. Make sure she is max skilled. Moving on finally to Elowen, all that matters on Elowen is that she has this maxed out, and then she has her heals that aren't terrible, so they can at least be landing on Nyx. Nothing else matters, I don't even know if I changed his build. If you give her Rage Regen, the more she ults, the more you can use her to take advantage of uh, Idril's passive. When Idril's ulting and another ally ults, it will boost her damage. Uh, that is basically it. Now for a Sargok showcase, here we go, Gear Raid 321. You're going to see the initial clear the first time I ever cleared it for him. Alrighty guys, here we go. This is my clearance at 321 for Inca. You can see power dominance was off. Same squad you just saw. We're at 550k BP, about 200k low. I'm just going to talk you through exactly what happened here. So we place our uh, Dallin first just so we can get some concentration, then Dolores. Now we're going to wait till we have 12 costs so we can deploy Sargok. I'll tell you full disclosure, I was about to beat it the run before this and I canceled it so I could record and get the first clearance live. So here comes Sargok, you can see 32k already, no boost from Dolores, no nothing. Now I've clicked on Dolores so we can trigger her ult immediately. We quickly get uh, Idril down, then we do a little escape trick, get Laurel so we can just do Idril as soon as possible, and we instantly ult with her. Now we're going to sit on the ult from Autumn, we got Autumn down, we're going to sit on Autumn's ult, and then we are going to do wait, sit on Sargok's as well. As soon as soon as she moves over to the guy in her column, the guy she's shooting at right now, that's when we trigger Autumn. Now we're going to place Elowin uh, so we can get her taking the aggro from the boss and so we can get some rage regeneration. And look how close that was there. Idril just was able to get the kill. This was extremely sweaty. Now we trigger Sargok once the boss is settled because she you kind of can't attack her for that first moment. Uh, and then we get Aracha down, so Aracha can start taking aggro. And you can see we got the roll on Dolores, so you want to restart till you get that, that plus 300. That happened right before this. So you can basically perfectly line up the ults from Sargok and Dolores right there. And look at that, we're already down to, to two-thirds health. That's huge. Now we get down Nyx, and now we can kind of settle in. For someone like Elowin, right, we don't need her ult. It's, we're just going to save it for when Idril is ulting so we can get that big boost. Unfortunately, I, I was trying to find a way that I could show you the damage we put out on the Succubus Queen with Sargok. You can see the way it ticks off. It's crazy. 
uh, but you just can't see the numbers. There's no way to zoom it out. So Moonton, if you're watching, please fix that. Now we're sitting on everything. We're waiting, waiting, waiting. We picked up down there so we could quickly get Laurel down. We want to trigger Sargok and then Idril while Laurel's down so we get that 20% damage boost. You can see the swords appearing above their head. Then we go down the line. We do Dolores, then Autumn, uh, then we do Nyx. All of that's boosting Idril. Just if you do it too quickly, you won't get boosts on all of them. So we tried to time that out. Now we do Elwin so we can pick out this one on the right. And now look at these hits from Sargok. Ticking off like 2%, 3% every hit from him. And we're just melting, melting, melting the boss. You can see above that, it looks like 150k, 100k. 150k uh, and it's crazy and we're, we're basically gonna get the kill we're down by 10% that was what I was looking for because then we're gonna have a brief window here and if we can kill the boss quick enough hot sit uh, can do most of the damage and then Idril can pick up the slack that's what we're going for and Sargok just when he's lined up with Idril and when he gets blood spears going he just completely completely melts we got a poison there and spider toxin from Arancha, so that helps out a bit down goes the boss and now we're, we know we're in the clear for the fight so 0.5 Point zero. We can remove uh, Aracha, remove Sargok, and now you can see we actually got it well enough that Idril, we killed fast enough thanks to Sargok, the middle, that Idril can move on to the right, kill that front guy, which is the only one Hotsit cannot kill herself. Absolutely beautiful. Hotsit and Idril do everything. We can pick Hotsit up. Alora would work here, but not with this gear. Not at all, right? You, this gear is not good. Let's be completely honest. We have a nice legendary lord. We have Hotsit but we needed someone special like Sargok to come in and save us. We didn't know if we were going to get 320 on this account. So getting 321 with no Silas and with this gear is pretty dang sweet. We triggered Dolores before we pick up uh, Laurel so we don't waste the rage boost Laurel gives. Now as soon as Idril's ready, we trigger her. Once she's going, now we'll trigger Nyx's ultimate so we get a boost uh, from Idril. See that? that this really bright green arrow she shoots? We'll do the same thing with Autumn, way to beat, and then do Elowin. If you do it too fast again, they won't both register and she will only get one boost, not two because it has to be different hits. So just don't spam those too quickly. Now you see Dolores is ready. And now we're waiting for Sargok to come back up. Uh, I'm going to get Aracha down quickly just for a boost. And now I can't find Sargok. Come on, get Sargok. I remember this happening. I'm like, this was not smooth. I'm waiting. There we go. Sargok down. I think about Hotsit. Oh, no, that's why. That's why. I was like, should I get Hots Sargok down? No, let's do Hotsit just to be safe, just because I did not want to blow the run. But obviously, we could start picking off with Sargok. We'd get the extra line of range. But with how well Idril did on the left, I decided, let's just clean up the run. Let's get Hotsit. But you'll see, even without that, when, when I show you the damage at the end of this run, what Sargok did was just crazy. So there's Hotsit doing a little bit. Let's get Laurel. Let's pick up, and let's get that last little bit from Idril. Boom. GG's in the chat. So there we have it. Pretty pretty crazy stuff, I think. We really melted that boss. With, if, you, if you've done a lot of gear A3, if you're a content creator, you do takeover street friends, or you just watch a lot of the stuff, this is probably the lowest gear we've ever gone. Good heroes, but look at that. Sargok almost matching Idril while Idril's attacking every inch of the map. Sargok putting up over 13 million damage just on the, the middle of the map, the mobs and the boss. It's absolutely nutty. Look at that. And same build as we were running, right? Just doing our absolute darnest, doing some big boy damage. This guy is nasty. All right, there you have it, guys. Sargok, truly the man who becomes speed, destroys the sound barrier. I think he's crazy. What I didn't show you in this video, just because I don't have my own account to show him in like high level GVG, is he's just tremendous. One of the very, very, very best heroes in the game for Guild Wars. He's also incredible in anti air arena. If you've got a Gon, I highly suggest you try him out. If you got an Aracha Lunaria, also fine. Flat up, I don't know, we'd have to see. But he's ridiculous. Uh, if you can get him going and get his health really low, he just deletes everything. There's, there's no condition, there's no nothing. With Silas, you really need him ulting, at least in PvP content, to truly, truly shine. For Sargok, you don't need it. As long as he's hitting his blood spears and as long as his health is low and he's going super fast, you are good to go. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this guide. This one was a ton of work for me. Big thank you to Inca32 for lending me his account. It really was exactly the account I was looking for. I wanted an account that was up and coming, but not strong enough, they thought, to beat 321, and I could highlight Sargok as the unit that pushed it over the edge. I know I surprised himself. I know he was very surprised too. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like it, give it that thumbs up, subscribe, talk to me in the comments, share it with your mother. I've been Vasidious, and I'll see you real soon. Fastidious.